the chess lovers Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you a very famous historical game played between Gary Kasparov and Deep Blue Computer. The game was played in 1997 in New York. But before starting our game a brief historical reference. In 1996 and 1997, Gary Kasparov played a pair of six game chess matches against IBM supercomputer called Deep Blue. The first match Kasparov won and the second lost. I have to tell you that the newly developed Deep Blue was twice as fast as the 1996 version and was capable of evaluating 200 million positions per second. This game was played in round 1 and now without further ado let's get started with our game and see what happened on the board. In this game Kasparov had white pieces and he opened up with knight f3. This is the ready opening but later we will see that instead of going for main theoretical positions Kasparov would choose a very offbeat line d5 by deep blue, g3, bishop g4. With this move black is threatening to capture on f3 and double up white's pawn structure on the king side but Kasparov played b3, a provocative move inviting black to capture on f3 but Tiplo didn't go for that move, instead developed his queenside knight. Knight d7 is on the board, bishop b2, e6, bishop g2, knight f6, white castles kingside, c6. If we have a look, black is setting up a very solid formation and is playing very cautiously. Meanwhile we have d3, bishop d6. Knight d2, black castles kingside and this time we have h3, bishop h5, e3, h6, queen e1. Kasparov is breaking the pin and is making the knight mobile, queen a5 and this time we have a3. If we have a look at the position, Gary Kasparov went for a very solid setup. This is the hippopotamus formation which is a perfect opening when playing against computers. This is a well-known strategy when playing against computers. You are sidestepping the main theoretical battle and instead you are going for the super solid formation which is very hard to break and in typical positions the players need to develop strategical ideas and as we know computers are extremely bad in developing strategical ideas. That's why Kasparov's choice is just perfect and gives him great chances in the battle. By the way this is called anti-computer strategy and similar openings have been seen a lot of times when elite players faced computers. Here Deep Blue moved his bishop on c7, knight h4. White wants to go for g4 and then after bishop g6 damage black's pawn structure on the king side. That's why deep blue played g5. Kicked away white knight. This is a normal move which is also preferred by stockfish but is somewhat weakening black's king side. Knight f3, e5 and finally one of Kasparov's pawns steps on the fourth rank. e4 is on the board. Rook e8. Knight h2 and queen b6. The computer is freeing the a pawn's path, but the impression is that black is lack of strategical ideas and is unable to find the right path. Queen c1 by Kasparov, a5, rook e1, and this time we have bishop d6. The computer first played bishop c7 and then is moving back the bishop on d6, wants to bring it on g1, a7 diagonal. Of course, the computer lost too many tempos. Meanwhile we have knight f1, he takes e4, this is move 19 and for the first time we see an exchange, right? d takes e4, d takes e4, bishop c5 and knight e3, Kasparov is successfully neutralizing the threat. Rook d8, this time we have knight f1 and g4. A dubious decision by the computer. After this move black will be left with a ruined exposed king side. Now comes h takes g4, knight takes g4, f3, knight takes e3, knight takes e3, bishop e7, king h1, bishop g5. A nice maneuver by the dark squared bishop. Black is still keeping the pin. Rook e2. This steps into a pin but at the same time in some lines the rook can be very useful on the second rank. a4 by computer b4 and f5. 
Well, let's move the computer wants to make use of these pins. And I have to tell you that this actually leads to technical complications. On the surface, it seems like that Deep Blue, which is able to calculate 200 million positions per second, can outperform its human opponent. But Kasparov's positional understanding of chess and intuitive feel for position allows him to win in this battle. Human calculator Gary Kasparov turns out to be a better product than the machine, and Kasparov accepted the challenge and captured on f5, e4 by computer, and this time we have f4. A precise decision by Kasparov, otherwise if black could capture on f3 then this could have been catastrophic for white. That's why in our game we have f4, Kasparov is inviting black to win this rook and we have it, bishop takes e2 after which Kasparov captured on g5. By going for the exchange sacrifice, Gary Kasparov managed to gain two powerful post pawns on f and g files. Of course, black can't recapture with the h pawn because of this knight d5 move, by the way. Knight c4 is also strong in both cases, the idea is to open up the queen's diagonal. And if c takes d5, then black king can even get checkmated. That's why after f takes g5, we have knight e5. With this move, deep blue is blocking the dark squared bishop's diagonal and is centralizing his knight. Meanwhile, we have g6. And now these past pawns can cause a huge headache to deep blue. Bishop f3, bishop c3. Another nice decision by Kasparov in some lines, he can move away his queen and the bishop will control the d2 square, not allowing rook d2 intrusion. Queen b5, yes, the engine wants to go for queen e2, that's why Kasparov played queen f1. He is offering the exchange of queens and we have it, queen takes f1, rook takes f1. h5, king g1, Kasparov can both centralize his king and also is breaking the pin. King f8, a mistake, after which black's position goes down quickly. Instead, it was better to play knight g4, and now if f6, then rook e6. And if bishop h3, then rook takes f6. In this case, black is giving away a piece, but is getting rid of white's powerful past pawns, and is managing to prolong his resistance. Here is one of the possible lines. After the exchange of rooks on g1, if we have a look at the position, though the engine evaluates white's position as much better, but still, deep blue can give a tough fight and can fight for a draw. This is not going easy for white at all, but instead after king g1 we have king f8, bishop h3, b5, while black is playing on the queen side, Kasparov is making his position stronger on the king side and taking into consideration the fact that all the events are happening on the king side. Of course, playing on the king side is very essential. In here we have several exchanges on g4 and after those simplifications, the question arises, how can black stop these monsters supported by the dark squared bishop and the rook? Rook d5 and we have f6, and it was in here that Deep Blue made a very dubious decision and played rook d1. Allegedly, the move was a result of a bug. Seeing that its position is totally hopeless, the computer just made a random move. Instead, rook f5 could allow Belek to prolong his resistance. Here is one of the possible lines, though I have to tell you that in the end of the day, again, white is winning. But in our game after f6 we have rook d1 and after g7 the team of deep blue resigned. Yes, these pawns are simply unstoppable guys, that's why in here we have a resignation. A very, very nice anti-computer strategy by Gary Kasparov. In the critical moment, Gary Kasparov's positional understanding turned out to be more important than deep blue's calculating skills and it was Kasparov who managed to win in this game. In the end of the video, as usual, a chess puzzle for you. Please take a look at this position and try to find a winning move for white. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Here are more suggestions for you. Consider checking them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Good luck.